So in this video, we'll be learning about or we'll be discussing about the properties of charges. It's an important topic, mainly theoretical type of questions come from this, uh, this part of the topic and you can also expect some of the simpler form of numerical questions from this topic. So let us discuss the important part of the properties of a charge. So the first important property that you need to understand is charges are transferable. That means what? You can transfer charge from one particular body to the next particular body. How are you going to discuss that? Let us take an example. Suppose if we have a body, suppose this is body 1 and this is body 2. Okay. In a general situation, you need to understand this very important, this very nicely because it's a very important part of the chapter. When you talk about any general situation, any kind of body will have equal amount of positive charges as well as negative charges. That means any kind of neutral bodies will have same amount of protons and same amount of electrons. That is why their charges nullify and as a whole the bodies are neutral. So all the bodies that exist in the universe are basically or mostly neutral bodies. That means they have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. Now, if I talk about two bodies in which there is deficiency of charges, that means a body might have excess amount of positive charge or excess amount of negative charge, then these bodies are known as charged bodies. When they have the same amount of protons and neutrons, uh, sorry, protons and electrons, then we'll call them neutral bodies. So there is nothing like chargeless bodies. You need to understand, there is nothing like chargeless bodies. A body can either be positively charged, negatively charged, or it might be neutral. Now let us take a situation in which I'll just give you an experimental situation in which charges are actually flowing from body 1 to body 2. Now, what kind of a charge might flow? Because we know there are two types of charges, right? There is positive charge, which is because of protons, and there is negative charge, which is because of electrons. Now, when I talk about charges flowing, you need to make it very clear that only negative charges can flow from one body to another. Why? Why is it so? Because negative charges are because of electrons and electrons form the outermost shells or the outermost portion of an atom. When we need to talk about proton transfer, protons basically are found in the nucleus of an atom. In order to get those protons out, you need to supply a huge amount of energy and you will end up getting the same charge by transferring an electron. Just that, when you transfer an electron, the charge will be negative. When you transfer a proton, the charge will be positive. So why waste so much of energy by taking out the protons from the nucleus in order to get the same charge, which can be given by taking out an electron? That is why you need to understand that when we talk about transfer of charges, it's only electrons that move from one body to another. There is no transfer of protons unless it is mentioned show. Okay. Now, if charges get transferred from one body to another, what needs to get transferred? It would be electrons, right? So when electrons get transferred from body 1 to body 2, how would these bodies behave now? Now these bodies were initially neutral. When the charges get transferred from 1 to 2, this body will now have deficiency of electrons, whereas this body will now have excess of electrons. Now when a body has deficiency of electrons, what kind of a charge will it acquire? It will acquire an overall positive charge. When this body has got excess of electrons, what kind of a charge will it acquire? It will acquire an overall negative charge. Now electrons also carry masses. This was a very important or very simple question that was asked years back about when electrons get transferred, what happens to their masses and stuff. So you guys already come to know, so when the body is losing electrons, it will also lose some amount of its mass because electrons do have some amount of mass even if it's negligible. So the new mass M prime will be given by what? The original mass minus delta M. This delta M is because of the masses of the electrons that is getting removed and acquired by the next body. What would be his new mass? His new mass will be given by M plus delta m because you will be acquiring the same amount of mass that he, this body is losing. So his mass would increase and his mass would decrease theoretically speaking. And how much would this delta m be? This delta m would actually be what? It would be 
n times the mass of an electron we have already mentioned what is the mass of an electron in in a, in a form a form of video so this delta m would be given by n times the mass of an electron what is this n here this n represents how many electrons are getting transferred from body 1 to body 2 so this is the whole thing that you need to understand when you are, we are talking about transfer of charges a body which will lose electron will get a positive charge and his mass will decrease a body will gain that excess electron will acquire a negative charge and his mass will gradually increase let us discuss about the next property now so we have already discussed the first property that is charges are transferable now let us come back to the next property that is charges are added this is one of the very simplest of property that charge actually show what does this mean charges are added this only means that charges are basically nothing but scalar quantities okay now what do you mean by that suppose in a region if i say there are three charges two column minus four column and ten column okay in a region of space suppose there are three charges 2 minus 4 and 10 and if I ask you what is the total charge in this particular region then what you can do is you can directly add them up so how much will you get 2 minus 4 that is minus 2 10 minus 2 that is 8 column so as a whole in this region there is 8 column of charge so that means what if you are having multiple charges discrete charges then you can add them up to get the total charge in that region that only shows that charges are basically added. so the third and the most important property which I personally believe is actually this one property says charges are quantized now what do you actually mean by this statement charges are quantized students basically have a habit of understanding this property with a simple formula the formula goes by q equals to n times of e the total charge in a particular body will be given by n times of the charge of an electron but this is not the way of understanding this property let me give you an example a pretty easy example to understand this property nicely Suppose if I say I have 10 pencils, 10 good sized pencils and 1 half size pencil in my box. Okay, I have 10 good size pencils and 1 half size, half size pencil in my box. Now if I go and ask my friend to say me how many pencils do I have as a whole how many would he say would he say 10 or would he say 10.5 because eight pencil ka aada hai, right you, you might understand that thing right so would he say 10 pencils or would he say 10.5 pencils now the correct way of saying it is neither 10 nor 10.5 he has to say that there are 11 pencils as a whole why because if I am asking him about pencil, a pencil means one discrete value. So as well, how many such pencil values will I have? I will be having 10 good size but one half size. The half is not counted as a half. You cannot take it as a fraction. So we have to take, say it as 11 pencils. So a fraction does not originate there. Same goes when we are talking about charges. The simplest value of one charge or one electron is given by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Okay, now if a body has got 10 electrons, so how much will his total charge be? If he has got 10 electrons, then his total charge would be 10 into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Okay, now nobody can have 2 by 3 electrons, right? Is there something called 2 by 3rd of an electron? A body ka 2 by 3rd of an electron nahi ho sakta hai. That is impossible. Okay, it would either have 2 electrons or it would either have 3 electrons. So this particular value can never be a fraction it has to be a whole number right it cannot be zero it cannot be zero as well so this value should start from one to and it can go up till infinity depending how many times how many electrons are there in a particular body so that thing is actually mean by quantization okay one electron is also known as one quanta of charge Okay, so anybody which will have particular amount of charges that will have a whole number of electrons. It cannot be a particular fraction. That is what is actually mean by charges are quantized. Okay, now let me give you a numerical example to understand this particular fact. Now, let us try to understand that property of quantization by a very simple example. And I'm very sure once this example is clear, you'll also understand the property as a whole. Now, the question says, 
which of the following is possible? In the first question, it is Q equals to 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. In the next one, it is Q equals to 2 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. A very simple mistake is being committed by students in this kind of questions. They would directly see the value in front. It is 2, which is a whole number, and they would say that this is a possible scenario. You do not need to understand it by this way. What was actually the formula? This is where the formula would come handy. Okay, the formula says Q equals to n times of E. This E has a value of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Right? And for quantized charge, this n has to be a whole number. This n cannot be 0. It can start from 1, 2 and it can go on up till any number of electrons are actually there. Okay? So, when you use this formula and you need to find n, n would be given by what? Q by E. Right? So, dividing the total charge by the charge of one electron, you get the value of n. You apply this formula here. You apply this formula here. In this case, we will be getting n as Q by E. And that would give us how much? Q is 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19. E is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. 10 to the power minus 19 minus 19 will get cancelled and you will get the value of n as 2. Which is not a fraction. Right? So, this is a possible case. But if you apply the same formula here, if you find out the number of electrons by dividing Q by E, you will be getting a fractional number, P by Q kind of a form of number, which is not a whole number. And electrons cannot be in terms of fractions. As I've already said, they're always quantized. They has to be in fixed values. So this is not a possible case of charges. But the first one, that is 3.2 into 10 to the minus 19, that gives us the total value of electrons as 2. So this is a possible case of quantization. So I hope the property of quantization is now clear to you guys. So, the last property, and mind it, this property will also come handy in the later part of the chapter, is actually the property that says charges are conserved. Okay? This is basically a very important property because this property will also help us to do some numerical problems that will be based on conservation of different kind of things. Okay? Now, let me give an example here as well to, so as to make the things clear. Let me say, I have, again, I have two bodies. Okay? This body is having, suppose, 10 Q amount of charge. The next body is have a, having about, suppose, minus 6 Q amount of charge. Okay? So, if I ask, what is the total charge in the whole system? As a whole in the system, what is the total charge? So, as you already know, the charges are additive and there are also scalar quantities. The total charge in this whole system would be given by 10 Q plus minus 6 Q and you will get it as 4 Q. Correct? So, now if I say, suppose uh, 2Q of charge get transferred from the first body to the next body. Okay? In the first situation, I already come to know what was the total charge in the whole combination. That was 4Q. Now, in the next situation, I am saying that 2Q amount of charge is going to flow from this body to this body. So, what is the total charge in this body now? That would be 8Q. That would be 10Q minus 2Q. So that would be 8Q. What would be the total amount of charge in this particular body? This body is actually gaining this 2Q amount of charge. So it would be having minus 6Q plus 2Q. That is minus 4Q amount of charge. Now, what is the total charge after this transfer took place? After this transfer took place, the total charge in the first body is 8Q. The total charge in the next body is minus 4Q. So if you add these two together, 8Q plus minus 4Q, will still end up getting 4Q, which was the charge before the transfer took place. So, that says what? Charges never get destroyed. We can't even create them. All we can do is transfer them from one body to another. That is whole of the conservation law. Conservation law states what? That it can, the thing that gets conserved, it cannot be created, neither it can be destroyed. It can only be transferred from one body to another. The charges, they also follow the same property. So these are the four most important properties of charges. Thank you. Well guys, if you like our video, please like, share and subscribe. And in order to stay updated for more such videos, you can join the free WhatsApp group, the link of which will be given in the description below. And for any kind of queries, you can send us the questions here and also give us preferences for what kind of videos would you like to see next. Thank you.